Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the 37th 75K tutorial. This is one was requested by uh, da, 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 da. what? Um, scream like an idiot. Uh, okay, and this was um, from the the track uh, the grave from Black Tiger Sex Machine, and someone else Apache, I think. Featuring someone else. It's a very long title. Anyway, um, this is the sound that we're going to try to do. This is what I got. Kind of close. The, so this, so stuff like this crops up a lot. And not just in requests, but it's sort of in my observations of sounds, where we get almost this kind of brassy sounding sound to it. And here, here's the thing about brassy sounding stuff, is that every time I hear it, I think to myself, was that just a trumpet or a trombone if, if you're for, for example if you're curious about the um the um inception brrr, that's a trombone doing that and some other stuff but primarily trombones so like whenever you hear the sound i, I think it's a like how 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 likely is it that that's really just a brass instrument and not really a synth and it's not even really about the fact that um it's people do people do an often and fine job of synthesizing uh, brass just straight up with just saw waves and stuff, but just it's actually quite amazing how much like a saw wave brass stuff sounds. If you ever look at like um, full force, uh, ding, full force uh, brass instrumentation in a spectral an analyzer, it looks an awful lot like a, sign, uh, a saw wave. And the things that make it sound like it, like the brassiness nature of it, have more to do with like pitch motion and filtering of like the of those particular harmonics than just the harmonic content themselves which is very unusual for instruments like real life instruments most real life instrumentation the reason why they sound so real is because of, of just weird strangeness of that that's as true for their particular harmonic content um having said that the thing that makes a sound like this sound so much like a, uh, a brass instrument actually has more to do with ambient business than the actual sound itself. For example, if I turned off the reverb, this is what it sounds like. Suddenly it sounds, oh, that's super synthy sounding. That's super not realistic sounding at all. But then, oh, hmm. Now, uh, I pointed out the name of the song, um, Black Tiger Sex Machines, The Grave. And if you listen to it and you listen to this drop, um, you actually get a bit of a clue about what uh, the layer is because it is a layer. That's because the first time I would go through, you hear, and it goes through, it does that, that whole thing. And then the next time around, it does this. You know, it has this this thing, this sort of basically normal sounding super soft thing kind of going by itself. And so that, you know, very easily like inferred sort of what we're going to be doing with this. We go, oh, it's just a layer with those two things. Um, not literally that sound because that I just incorporated that you know as to add those heart that harmonic stuff in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk about what's going on here. Um, the main automation is on this um, this bandpass filter. I'm doing a little bit of weirdness with it. What I'm doing is that I'm, I'm automating it primarily just straight up here. Um, but let's turn out the reverb as well. The reason also that I'm using a reverb in post like this and not just the reverb inside the harmer is because um, I wanted to specifically have this dry and wet mix because the, the kind of thing that I'm trying to do re relies more on this, the, the reverb itself being very loud and almost overpowering the sound. Um, and it's a lot easier for me to do that with this particular kind of interface versus what happens with this thing, which can do more or less the same thing, but just means different stuff. And so that's sort of what was there. But um, anyway, so main deal, this bandpass filter. <laughs> But um, I'm also, in the articulator, I have the unit index mapping so that it's spread out across all the various voices. Um, I, this is a six-voice unison saw, right, with the phase randomness uh, engaged. So that it gives it that kind of cloudy feel versus kind of a happy medium. I've also kind of messed with the unison pitch itself to the further sort of cloud up the higher frequencies, but the lower harmonics are still kind of together to maintain sharpness. This is this is the make it it's far away from sort of sounding perfectly synthetic with all the stuff in line, because it's sort of what separates perfectly synthetic stuff versus not perfectly synthetic stuff is that they're not perfectly synthesized. Go figure. But um, the the um, I wanted to have 
it wanted to have some resonance sort of resonancy sharpness to it but not a fully fully that and also i'm using the band pass filter but in the original i'm pretty it, it looks pretty clearly to be just the regular low pass filter but um what's also kind of interesting to note is that you can sort of see that like when it goes up here it's pretty solid like this this area like if i could do a little lasso thing it would be like you know this area here and then this part after it is a little bit diminished so there's a number of ways that you could do this i mean uh what i decided to do just to have to do is to have the um filter come back down but like this big old tail is basically just the reverb doing that so the we're primarily getting reverb being the main sound out of the original anyway uh parts of parts of it are just kind of coming up and coming down that kind of thing it's actually very cool to look at this in uh in the spectrum <laughs> A lot of this also has to do, like, actually, like, you, you can kind of, you might be, might feel yourself, oh, it's not as sharp as the original. And that has more to do with just the side chaining than uh, the actual sound design. And I know I didn't quite get, I didn't really nail, like, the texture of it, but um, <laughs> I just have that sneaking suspicion that it could just have been a brass instrument, but uh, it probably wasn't. I don't really spend a lot of time doing brass stuff like this. If I'm going to do brassy stuff, I'm usually thinking of like actually doing the super fake sounding 80s synth brass kind of stuff. Or I'm not even really trying to make it sound like brass stuff. Anyway, that kind of like really resonancy, resonancy, resonant business is trying trying to be diffused by the fact that the, the filter is actually going to be is actually in a different enough positions. That's what the res, that's what the the use in this mapping means is that for each of the six individual voices, the uh, filter's position is offset a bit, so that all six voices are not the same exact filter position. Um, what this what, what this does is creates a kind of a weird comb filter effect, especially if I uh, have really low. And such. And did I do that thing? I did. Oh, boy. Yeah. So... Um, as this was originally a low pass filter, um, going all the way up made sense. However, now that we're doing a band pass filter, I had to bring the top of the sort of the maximum value down. So that instead of the thing doing this, it's really doing this. Although now I, now I realize that this is all the same pattern and I really didn't have to do that. So good job, me. Derp. <clears throat> what else? Uh, distortion. Um, Part of the texture in the original made me think there's a specific kind of wave shaping going on to make it feel that way, and I was lazy and didn't really feel like trying to figure that out, so I just put on ye old log distortion, and it sounded fine, so I just went with that. It's pretty great. Reverb. Small, like, tininess, and I'm using I'm using FL's Reverb 2, which isn't terribly um, deep, but it's enough to give you that kind of ambience, ambientness to it. <laughs> And I went and ruined it. Yeah, how low are you? Pretty low, wow. So, I mean, uh, if you wanted to really nail, like, it's I, I could spend time trying to an an get the angle and timing on this or whatever. And like part of the expression, the expressiveness of the sound in the original song is that not every not every note, the pattern alternates between super short, like rather sharp hits, and then longer ones so like, it's really just a difference in like reverb that's applying what's happening here but without the reverb like if that wasn't there the basic thing that causes it to sound brassy is just the um the filter opening and closing and of course this this being applied to you know your average super saw kind of concept because if i just did this to a saw saw even with the randomness. It's really quite amazing what filters, filters and solids can do just to sound like orchestral stuff. And then reverb. <laughs> I didn't really perfectly nail it, but through this sort of process of just reverbing filters, essentially, on, on saws, you could probably come up with uh, your own variant of this. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, this um, project will be available to download in the description of this video. And if you have any questions about this, please let me know. If you'd like to make a request for yourself, please do so in the Reddit thread linked in the description of this video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and as usual, 
Have a nice day.